Hey guys, welcome back. So, I got my socks back, I got my ten bucks, and we're going to be continuing with this Let's Play. So here we go. So, a lot of fans of the series feel that this is a, uh, a weaker entry in the series. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this was the first game in the series. Best sail away before you get hurt. With, this was the first game that didn't have any involvement from Ron Gilbert, the original creator of the series. I've come to plunder your treasure. Good luck, boy! You're the ugliest monster ever created. If you don't count all the ones you've dated. Heaven preserve me! You look like something that's died! <laughs> well, I'm fit to be tied. If this takes too long, do I get overtime pay? Ha! Ah, I've beaten you. I let you live if you give me your treasure. If I had treasure, don't you think I'd spend it before grappling with the likes of you? I, I suppose you would. Never mind then. So yeah, Ron Gilbert. A very important figure at LucasArts. He was uh, responsible for Maniac Mansion, Who are and Monkey Island, and he actually had a whole trilogy planned out for the Monkey Island games, but he left the company after fi they finished Monkey Island 2, and he started, he went on, he made his own company and made, he started making all these little kitty games like Pajama Sam and Putt Putt, and I'm sure those games were good, I never played them. Because, I, I mean, I saw them in the stores all the time, but, uh, you know, they were like for little kids. I was a big kid at the time. Give me your treasure and I'll let you live. Ah! Thankfully, Ron Gilbert has recently come back to making proper LucasArts style adventure games with uh, Thimbleweed Park, which, if you're a fan of these type of games and you haven't played it, go get Thimbleweed Park right now and play that game, because it is so good. Hunger! Touché! Oh, that is so cliché! I'll skewer you like a salad a buffet! I think the, uh, the Telltale Games series, those guys, they were kind of, like, supposed to be picking up the mantle of LucasArts and continuing where they left off. They made the Sam and Max games and... Well, the newer Sam and Max and the newer Monkey Island, but... I don't know, those... I, I mean, I enjoy those games, but it never quite felt the same as the classic LucasArts-style adventures, and Thimbleweed Park absolutely does. It's a total... Like, it is a LucasArts adventure game. It's not made by LucasArts, but it's Ron Gilbert, and it's, like, pixelated in the classic style. It looks like a Maniac Mansion game. What did he say? I wasn't paying attention to his insult. I think that my sister's in a family way. I leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated! <clears throat> my craving for peanuts will never be satiated. 
Open your hold so I may take your treasure. Treasure? You wanted treasure? I'm sorry, I'm fresh out. So yeah, get Thimbleweed Park, that's great. And Ron Gilbert, actually before Thimbleweed Park came out, he wrote a blog post talking about what he what it would be like if he got the chance to come back and do his own Monkey Island thing. Which honestly I'm still holding out hope for that. Because, I mean, you know, if Ridley Scott can come back to the Alien series and just ignore every movie that's come out since his first Alien, like, just ignore James Cameron's Aliens and everything, and just make his own new continuity, I think Ron Gilbert should be able to come back and make his movie Alien 3. But, uh, that ship was way too powerful. I should be fighting less fearsome opponents. And I mean, there's no reason that they couldn't even call it Monkey Island 3, because this, you know, they stopped numbering them after 2. This isn't Monkey Island 3, it's Curse of Monkey Island, so... I think he could just make Monkey Island 3, and I hope he gets to. I'm really holding out hope on that. If there's an online petition, let me know, I'll sign it. Ship. I'll be the first to sign. Your treasure or your life? You won't live to regret this! But yeah, I really do, I love this game. I, I wouldn't call it a low point in the series at all. Like, I'd say in terms of like the animation, the voice acting, the music, this is like a high point of the series. But uh, I'll be honest, as far as the story goes, it is a little weak compared to the first two. Like, you know, it was clear in those two games that Ron Gilbert, you know, like it felt like Monkey Island 2 felt like a proper continuation of the story for Monkey Island 1. And then this one kind of feels like... You know. Like, it felt like there was some unresolved stuff for Monkey Island 2 that they just kind of ignore. I mean, it did a fine job of continuing the story, but, uh... I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless fillet! Would you like to be buried or cremated? The importance of breakfast cannot be overstated. <laughs> Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. I'm waiting for these feelings of nausea to subside. Ha! Ah, I've beaten you! i let you live if you give me your treasure! If I had treasure, don't you think I'd spend it before grappling with the likes of you? I, I suppose you would. Never mind then. So... Yeah, like, I always wondered, how did Guybrush escape from Big Whoop, you know? They never explain it. He just starts this game off floating in a bumper car. Boarding a pirate ship can be hazardous to your life! Another big criticism this game gets is that uh, the ending is really weak. And I will, I will agree with that. Like, the whole lead up, everything, the first couple of islands, like, everything leading up in this game this whole game is great, but then when you get to the very last part, the ending is pretty anticlimactic. I've come to plunder your treasure. I'll see you, Clapton Irons, first. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I prefer to be fumigated. <laughs> When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified! I don't care for tomatoes unless they're sun-dried. I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet! When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless filet. 
I'll leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated. I am rubber, you are glue. Heaven preserve me, you look like something that's died. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. Give me your treasure! If I had treasure, don't you think I'd spend it before grappling with the likes of you? I, I suppose you would. Never mind then. But yeah, we're not here to criticize this game. We're here to celebrate it, because I love this a game. Ship can be hazardous to your life. This game... Just look at, look at the way the clouds are drawn, those curly... You know, I love it. I've come to plunder your treasure. No, I'll take your booty. <laughs> okay. Which ones haven't I gotten the answer to yet? Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, oh, I'm wait, glad I got to that be one already. Fumigated. I'll hound you night and day. Then be a good boy. Sit, stay. But I don't have it, <laughs> so. The air is much less humid around Santa Fe. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. Then killing you must be justifiable fungicide. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. I am rubber, you are glue. All right. You win! Give me your treasure, you wax-covered swab. I didn't want it anyway. We're loaded with booty. Back again, mister? What do you have for sale today? Today, customer names. I'll take the Mr. Massacre brand cannon. One Mr. Massacre coming right up. Mom! A mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Mm. I'll leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated. Oh, yeah? When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. At least mine can be identified. Yeah. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. Too bad they're all fabricated. I'll hound you night and day. Then be a good dog. Sit. Stay. I'll skewer you like a sour in a buffet. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless fillet. You win. 
Give me your treasure, yeah, grubby bilge swigger. Take it. You must cluttering up the hold anyway. We're loaded with booty. All right. Back again, mister? I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Destructomatic T-47. Whoa, mister. You entered a select group of pirates. You just ordered the Destructomatic T-47 armor-piercing carnage delivery system with auto-loading and fax motor. Quite a fine fax piece of hardware modem. if I do say so myself. Mom! All right. We'll be at Blood Island in no time. Look at that. Beautiful. And you know, for all the for all the criticizing I was doing a minute ago, you know, I gotta say, you know, Blood Island is one of the best segments in any Lucas Arts game. You better leave now if you value your life. I don't have any treasure, you know. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? Yes, but I'm not lying now. All right, let's I see if we can get some more. Just the same. You won't live to regret this. Let's see if we can get some more responses here before we take on uh, Rotting Ham. Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Is that your face? I thought it was your backside. <laughs> I've never seen such clumsy swordplay. Oh, haven't heard that one yet. My brother is working on a screenplay. <laughs> I'll hound you night and day. But then be a good dog. Sit, stay. This one yet? I'll leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated. Your odor alone makes me aggravated, <laughs> agitated, and infuriated. <laughs> Open your hole so I may take your treasure. Treasure? You wanted treasure? I'm sorry, I'm fresh out. What be you wanted? I don't have any treasure, you know. I know that. Why bother then? I need the practice. Fair enough. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Okay. I have never seen such clumsy swordplay. Oh, yeah? Oh, come on. Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Is that your face? I thought it was your backside. You're the ugliest monster ever created. If you don't count all the ones you've dated. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I prefer to be fumigated. I'll hound you night and day. Then be a good dog. Sit. Stay. You win! Give me your treasure. I haven't got any. Alright, I'm missing that one response, but I think I should be able to take on Rottingham now.
do you want, Monsieur Thropwin? Thropwin. <laughs> Give me my map, you fiend. Hmm. This may prove amusing. You're a disgrace to your species. You're so undignified. Hmm. At least mine can be identified. My attacks have left entire islands depopulated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. Never before have I faced someone so sissified. Hmm. Is that your face? Oh, I thought it was your backside. Nothing can stop me from blowing you away. Uh -huh. Oh, that is so cliche. Oh, no. Your stench would make an outhouse cleaner irritated. Your odor alone makes me aggravated, agitated, and infuriated. Nope, that wasn't right. Your mother wears a toupee. Look that much like your fiance? Nope. Nothing on this earth can save your sorry hide. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. There we go. Your lips look like they belong on the cash of the day. Aha. Uh -huh. I look that much like your fiance? Oh, what? Your looks would make pigs nauseated. If you don't count all the ones you've dated. Aha! Sacre bleu! I cannot believe it! I have been defeated in battle! So give me that map, take your ship and skedaddle. You win, you win, you'll get your map back! You were doomed from the start, you kleptomaniac. Alright, alright, I give up already. It's no wonder you lost with a sword so unsteady. Merci, I beg you, no more insults, please. Your smell and face remind me of moldy old cheese. Ah! We got the map back, now we can sail to Blood Island. The bartender, the thieves, his aunt, and her lover. All right.
I guess I blacked out for a second. Where's Elaine? She flew a wee bit into the woods when we crashed. Then let's get going. We'll find her, then scour the island for the uncursed diamond ring that'll transform her back to normal. I don't be thinking we will, lad. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, what do you mean, Haggis? This be a mutiny, Captain. We're leaving you. Did I mention that I'm offering my crew a very attractive pension plan? Ah, uh, you did. And the stock options. But we're still leaving. But why, Haggis? Why? Well, I admit being your pirate crew's been a real pleasure. A real pleasure. But we've grown restless. We can hear the voice of the siren calling to us, and she says she'd be wanting us to do her hair. You're going back to being barbers? Aye. We'll be sailing back to Plunder Island just as soon as we can fix the ship. Good luck, Captain Driftwood. It was a pleasure to be looting with you. I guess I'm on my own again. All right. You know, I love the first island, Plunder, but this part, this whole Blood Island area is great. You'd best be leaving that. That there hand lotion be for the rough, dry skin that can often accompany ship repair. <laughs> you know, we got this beautiful nighttime imagery here. Elaine looks like she's all right. Hang on, honey. I'm going to get you out of this mess. Boy, it's windy up here. Look at that moonlight. Beautiful. Feel the power of the ancient volcano goddess in Griswold Good Soup presents High Explosive, the most intense showgirl cabaret in the Caribbean. Starring Wilhelmina, temptress of the caldera. Nightly at 7. Leave that alone and turn down the lights, will you? Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a... Stop yelling! I wasn't yelling, I was just... Oh, I've got a terrible hangover. Find something to clear my head, and I can talk to you. And keep it down. Nah, they go straight to my hips. Oh, don't bother that. Just... Make the pain stop, please. All right. Let's see. I feel a dark presence coming over me. Hi there. Ah! <laughs> ah! Please <laughs> keep it down. No screaming. Oh my head. Hi, I'm Guybrush. And you would be? I am Madam Z, <laughs> uh, mistress of the ancient arts, a precognition and augury, diva of divination. Oh, <laughs> you're a fortune teller. Ah, that and so much more. Whatever. Oh, Tell me. me my fortune. I do not think you wish to hear. There are things of which a man is better off being ignorant. Oh, but I'm already ignorant of so many things. I want to know my future. No, you are not meant to know. I bet you just can't do it. That's the problem. You can't do it, and you're afraid everyone will find out you're just a phony. You know, I could put a curse on you that would make every morsel of food you eat become a ravenous cockroach inside your intestines, giving you the most excruciating death imaginable. 
So are you gonna tell me my fortune or not? <laughs> I'm not kidding! Okay, okay. What's in the cards for me? Fame? Fortune? Romance? Ah, very well. We will consult the cards. The process of reading the tarot is a very complex one. Each draw of the cards foretells an upcoming event in your life. When assembled, they will tell the story of your future. A future filled with twists and... Ah! Good Lord, woman, stop that screaming. What is it? Is that a good... Ah! It is death. Well, in the tarot, death just means change, right? I mean, it's <laughs> nothing to get worried about, right? Uh, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Now, please go! <laughs> There must be some mistake. Read my tarot cards again. There is no mistaking your fate, Guybrush. The cards do not lie. But if you insist, once again, it is death. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. Luck is not involved here, Guybrush. It is your destiny. Whatever. Let's see what the cards say this time. <laughs> Whatever. The card says... Death. Are you sure you're not dealing from the bottom of the deck? <laughs> Remember that curse I told you about? Okay, okay. Hit me. Death. How many of those cards do you have, anyway? <laughs> How about giving me one more tarot reading? This is evil work, Guybrush. The fates have conspired against you, and no man can interfere. Your path has been determined! Okay, I get your point. I really do. Just one more time for Guybrush. <gasps> Let me guess. Death? Leave this place! Huh? You are putting us all in grave danger! Your very presence will bring us nothing but sickness, tragedy, and death! Oh yeah? Well... Demon! Demon! <laughs> Look! A three-headed monkey! Ah! Then the prophecies were true! <laughs> Where? I don't see anything. He must have run away. This is a very bad omen. I really don't want to know what's in there. I really don't want to know what's in there. That fork is stuck in all that congealed cheese. locked. <laughs> oh, I gotta love those little details. This village is deserted. How curious. Here we find the original Monkey Island cannibals from the secret of Monkey Island. Now, practicing vegetarianism. Spoiler alert! Let me talk to old Lemonhead. You look familiar somehow. Perhaps it's because I look like a big lemon. <laughs> oh yeah, but it's more than that. We've met before, back on Monkey Island. Ah, uh, Monkey Island. 
We had a nice village there. Rent-controlled huts close to the good schools. Those were the salad days, so to speak. Till they put in that darned carnival. Carnival? Yes, carnival. Just as soon as they put up the first tent, whoosh, the whole place becomes trendy. Sailors coming in at all times of the night, that awful music droning on and on. And to be honest with you, I think the Midway games are rigged. Yeah, yeah. At night, it wasn't safe for a cannibal to walk the island alone. Cannibals? You say that like it's a bad thing. Well, it's true. But we are no longer vicious and bloodthirsty cannibals. No? No. We underwent a paradigm shift in our belief system several years ago. A pair of dimes? We decided we wanted to live a healthy cannibal lifestyle. <laughs> I love that joke. Completely cut back on our fatty missionary intake and went vegetarian altogether. But there certainly was a time I would have eaten you. Young guy like you. Not too much muscle. Hey! I'd probably marinate you in white wine for 45 minutes. Dip you in a light corn batter. Wrap you in banana leaves and bury you in a pit with a hundred hot coals. Let you roast overnight. Then I'd serve you on a bed of basmati rice with a garnish of shiitake mushrooms and shallots. Mm, mm. That sounds good. But not anymore, right? Mm. But, but not anymore, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, right, right. I'm Guybrush. Boy, am I getting tired of saying this. Creepwood, <laughs> Mighty Pirate, yada, yada, yada. I am Lemonhead. Can I help you with something? Aren't you afraid the volcano will destroy your village? The volcano? Oh, no. Mount Acidophilus is completely harmless. We have curried favor with Sherman, the all-powerful god of the volcano. Sherman. God of the volcano like spicy foods? Shut up, or I'll eat you. Okay. When we first landed on this island, the volcano god was most upset. Belching out smoke, vomiting up lava. It was disgusting, really. And potentially hazardous. We knew we had to do something to pacify the volcano god, and we assumed a good sacrifice would do the trick. A reasonable assumption. But when we threw the sacrifice into the volcano, Mount Acidophilus erupted violently. We thought Sherman was upset at us, so we started making sacrifices every day. We tried everything. Fish, poultry, livestock, phenylalanine. The usual. Then one day, we <laughs> tried Bree. There was a huge eruption that nearly killed us all. What happened? Sherman is lactose intolerant. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. Now, Sherman is on a very strict diet. He only gets fresh fruit, vegetables, and of course, soy products for the protein so important to muscle building. Oh, soy. Gotta run. Bye. That looks like a mask. Come on, guy brush, move faster.
I'd better get rid of this incriminating picture frame. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. says, visit Big Whoop for an eternity of pain and torment. I mean, fun and laughter. If you're a pirate with a sturdy skeletal structure and a high threshold for pain, but high threshold for pain is crossed out and replaced with craving for adventure, then Big Whoop is the place for you. Visit Big Whoop. Do it right now. There's no pictures or maps or anything. It just says that it's an awful lot of fun. Honest. A nail would split the cork in two. I need something smaller. Okay. Cool, a cork with a magnetic pin stuck in it. The mind boggles at the possibilities. Okay. Piracy. The Lechuk Way. Chapter 1. How to get more than 15 men on a dead man's chest. Captain Nick's shaving soap. It must have fallen from the barber's supplies when the ship wrecked. It's a soft cushion. Mm. I'll just use some of the cheese here. <laughs> All right, still got plenty of cheese left to give to the volcano. Very good. We're making progress here. See, I, I'm much better... I've played through the first half of the game so much more, so... This part... I don't have quite as well memorized. But... <coughs> oh! Oh, excuse me. Oh, but... But I think I should be able to remember everything well enough. I'll just walk over here so he won't see me put this on. <laughs> Ick. <clears throat> Finally, you're here. Come on, we're late for the sacrifice. God of the volcano who resides in Mount Acidopolis! Accept this sacrifice we make unto you. In the form of flesh with high amounts of fiber and wholesome cellulose. Free of all fat and trans fatty acids so that it might nourish you and bring your favor upon our humble village and not upset nor agitate your ulcerative caldera. <laughs> okay, boys, toss him in. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you and good night. <laughs> Roasted marshmallows. Okay. Use unmelted hunk of nacho cheese with massive seething caldera. Yep. You fool! You've given cheese to a lactose intolerant volcano god. Do you know what that means? You brought about the coming of the divine dysentery. <laughs> Run for your lives! <laughs> Divine dysentery. This game is great. Wow, that was more spectacular than I'd hoped. Okay.
It's full of seawater. Hey, neat, it points north. Science is fun when you know the secret. <laughs> the egg would break when it hit the ground. Ah, right. This is one ugly picture. Looks just like the bartender. Hmm, okay. Do I give these to him? Just that? Right? I don't think he'd like that. My pirate instincts tell me I should keep... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he'd like that. Yeah, I don't think he'd like that. Yeah, I don't think he'd... Wait a minute. Okay, I think I remember. I think that I need to give them the cheese, right? To patch the holes? The nacho cheese? I want to say that's what I have to do. I'm not going to carry around that heavy iron pot for no reason. Here's a wild pepper for your hangover remedy. I found this egg for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. Okay. Now what? I need the hair of the dog that bit me. Easy mode, there's like dog biscuits in the thing that you give to him. But I think in hard mode, you might have to give him this instead. Right, there we go. Ow, he bit me! Alright. Okay, fella, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, I guess it didn't hurt a bit. He must be shedding. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I was a kid, playing this game, we had a dog, Missy. She was an American Eskimo, and she used to shed like crazy, and you could actually, like, pull hair off her just like that, like, you know, just in big clumps. It would just... always shedding. This is some of the hair of the dog that bit me. Shh. Thanks. That's all the ingredients I need. Let me quietly mix up a dose. Our dryer filter used to come out like a big felt sheet of the dog hair. Ah, much better. Here, you can take the rest. All right. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? I'd like something subtle with a hint of oak. Right. Old Peg Rot Single Malt Whiskey. Ah, Papa Pichu. Here's your glass back. Ah, 
I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? Give me a big fruity drink with an umbrella in it. Good choice. It's a delicious taste of the islands, made with lemon, grapefruit, and ground beef. Hey, don't I get one of those decorative umbrellas to go on my tropical drink? Um, I don't think we have any. No, I'm wrong. I do have this one. <laughs> there we go. Ah, Papa Pichu, here's your glass back. All right. Uh... Head be clear for clearing foggy heads. That opened it. Lemon tonic. Okay, let's see. Consult a physician before using. Do not with mix with alcohol before operating. Really causes extreme, 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 extreme drowsiness. Okay, so. So I just need to mix the stuff with alcohol. Okay. I'd like a drink, please. Right. That makes the drink oh so much more appealing. It just occurred to me that mixing medicine and alcohol is a really stupid and possibly lethal thing to do. If I were a real person instead of a lovably inept cartoon character with the potential for a few more sequels, I wouldn't even consider it. <laughs> Skull. <laughs> oh. They had to put that warning in there. That's that's imitatable behavior. That's odd. It's supposed to cause drowsiness. I don't feel the least bit drowsy. In fact, I, uh... In fact, I feel, uh... <laughs> So then the Undertaker says, I wanted to be a pallbearer, but I couldn't stop coughing. Oh, 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 you crack me up, Mort. So what's with the new guy? Oh, he's been like that for an hour now. Passed out cold. He'll come around. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hmm. I guess that's the end of the game, then. What with him being the main character and all, funny. <laughs> I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, maybe they're trying something different. <laughs> when I should take care of him? Would you? It's bad for business, having him just lie there. Gotta love those fourth wall Rest jokes. Rest in peace and all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we did it. We, hey. we beat the game, guys. Join us I'm not really next dead. time next Neat Dreams Let's Play. <laughs> oh, come on. Cut it out. All right. Wait. Oh. Let's go. Well, I can't use the mallet with that. No. How do I... It won't open. I'm trapped. Uh, do we need the chisel? There we go. Yikes. Where's that telltale pounding coming from? It's coming from within one of these coffins. From the dead. The dead that surround me. They must know my horrible secret. They'll never let me rest until I've paid for the wrongs I've committed against. <laughs> Wait a second. I don't have a horrible secret.
let's see everybody's favorite favorite salesman locked in a coffin since part two I'm glad to be finally out of that thing, even though it was a spacious, comfortable model with plenty of leg and headroom. Well, hello there. Say, you look familiar. Uh, yes, well... Uh... Of course! Guybrush Threepwood. You're the one who locked me in there in the first place. Well, you see, I've been meaning to... No, no, I won't hear of it. That was the best time of my life. Gave me plenty of time to think, you know? To think about the things that really matter. I don't know if you've considered this, son, but live burials are not an altogether uncommon experience here in the Caribbean. I wasn't aware of that. Not to mention pirate raids and deadly sea battles, huge man-eating reptiles, dangerous quicksand pits, trigger-happy duelists, and of course, those pesky undead. Have you ever thought of what would happen to your loved ones should this gruesome fate befall you? No, but... but... Well, of course, you have plenty of time to think about it. Or do you? <laughs> I'm one of the lucky ones. I've been dead. It's given me a whole new perspective on life. A life that I'm going to devote to making sure people's life insurance needs are met. Here, take one of my business cards I've had made up. If you've been locked in that coffin, how are you able to have business cards made? <laughs> Now's not the time to worry about the technicalities, son. Now's the time to ask yourself, are you covered? Run along now and let me set up my office. Hmm? We're trapped in here. The door's locked. Nonsense! This is one of Stan's cozy crypts, <laughs> all equipped with a patented secure lock release mechanism. Just jiggle the handle there. Gotta love Stan. You know, he just pops out the coffin ready, <laughs> ready to start selling. You've convinced me. I want to buy some insurance. A wise choice, and one you won't soon regret. The question isn't whether or not you can afford to buy an insurance policy, it's whether you can afford not to. Speaking of which, can you afford to buy an insurance policy? Well, how much does it cost? Oh, that depends on a variety of factors. How much coverage you need, how much you're willing to spend, all sorts of highly complicated sliding scale insurance equations and such. But I won't bore you with all that. Just let me ask you this. How much money do you have? Well, I've got these wooden nickels. I see. Maybe I've confused you somewhere along the line. While nothing would please me more to send you out of here, with the peace of mind that your family will be provided for in the unlikely event of your death, I have to run a business here. If you can't at least show me some collateral, I can't give you a policy. How about an enormous uncursed diamond? How about that? Do you have an enormous uncursed diamond? Okay, no. But I'm like this close to getting one. <laughs> well, I'm this close to believing that you're trying to take advantage of my generosity. Maybe you'd like to make me a serious offer, hmm? I love the way that Stan's jacket is just like transparent and moves around over this background image of plaid. Hmm. This authentic pirate relic. A genuine tooth from an actual pirate. Only one of its kind. Is that real gold? The finest known to man. Not much spit on it either anymore. <laughs> now you're starting to speak my language. All right, let's find a coverage plan that suits your needs. And you can rest assured that you provided for your family well after your unfortunate departure. What are the terms of this plan exactly? It's quite simple, son. When you die, whoever holds that policy gets a lot of money. A lot of money? Wow. Wow is right. Now I want you to be careful out there. OK, I will. Thanks. No, I'm serious. I want you to be very, very careful. Will do. <laughs> oh, man. You know, another uh, great thing that was a first in this series here is the voice acting. Dominic Armado as Guybrush, and he is great. He's just perfectly cast. He's been the voice of Guybrush ever since. 
And I'm, I'm happy that he finally, that they remade the, uh, the original two and had uh, him voice acting. Uh, he... well, hi, that's a big bottle of lotion you have there. That's right, she be. And don't ye be getting any ideas about stealing it. We are sure to be needing it, you see. Carpentry on this tropical climate can and will prematurely age your skin. Tis but one of the many hardships a pirate must face daily during this barbarous age. Aye. And if we pirates didn't carry hand lotion aboard all our ships, we'd probably die from the chafing. <laughs> wow, if I were doing a history report on pirates and I included that back, I'd get an A+. We're talking guaranteed A+. And that A-plus just might get you into the college of your choice. Think about it. Hmm. There's no way that I can have even a drop of lotion? Well, maybe we could make a deal. You see, we need to be repairing the ship. She's leaky as a colander. And for some unknown reason, the ship's supplies of tar have been depleted. How the previous crew could set sail without any tar aboard eludes me. But the fact is, Unless we get us some tar or something like it, we're doomed to this island for good. Hey, I'd give you the whole bloomin' bottle of lotion if you could find me something to patch the ship so we can be on our way home. I'll let you get back to work. All right. Now can I grab that cheese? Come on, move it! I guess I'll just drag this down to Haggis now. Here, Haggis, this stuff should work to patch up the ship. Aye, laddie, indeed it should. The consistency of tar, but with a tangy pepper taste. <laughs> so, can I have your lotion now? Aye, lad, go ahead and take it. All right. Okay. Let's see if this slippery, greasy lotion does the trick. That should do it. The cursed ring exploded. Hmm. Dang. All right. Get that jar. Hi guys. I guess you'll be wondering how I came to be back from the dead. No questions for the dead guy come back to life. No questions like is there life after death or is there a heaven? Will there be adequate parking? <laughs> Fine. Be that way. I wouldn't tell you about the hereafter if you begged me. That jar's for my tips. Put it back. But I was going to put a whole lot of money in it. Too much for me to carry around with me. So I'm going to have to take it with me and fill it up. Oh, okay then. <laughs> that won't fit. That won't fit. What do you know about the lost ring of Blood Island? Oh, that's a very sad chapter in my family's history. My great aunt Minnie Stroney Goodsoup was a well-to-do member of Blood Island society. Her one weakness was her romantic nature. She had a thing for pirates, one in particular. He came into port, she fell instantly in love, and they were engaged within the week. Then, on the eve of their wedding, he stole the fantastic good soup diamond from her ring and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the empty engagement band on her finger until the day she died which was not long after. Some say she still haunts the Good Soup family tomb. It is a sad story, is it not? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, could you repeat that? <laughs> Get lost, Chowderhead. How can I get out to Skull Island? 
Well, there used to be a regular ferry out to Skull Island. Used to? Ah, one cold night, so the tale goes. The Welshman set out in his dinghy. The deep fog around Skull Isle obscured even the moon. But the Welshman could see the distant light of the Blood Island lighthouse. When he'd rowed half the distance, the light in the lighthouse was mysteriously smashed. And the poor Welshman was lost, almost never to be seen again. Uh, almost? Well, there are those who say that late at night, if you stare into the fog long enough, you may see the flying Welshman rowing in his <laughs> ghostly dinghy, lost for all eternity. Creepy. Mm. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Huh, I know I need to convince him. Here, yeah. did you just take my mirror? Nope. You're lying, aren't you? Oh, yes. wait, I remember. Put it back. All right, all right. Sheesh, what a grouch. What was that? Nothing. I remember now. I need to use the scissors. There, I've cut out the face. There we go. You just stole that mirror, didn't you? No, I didn't. It's right there. Look. Hmm, I guess you're right. Oh, dear. I'm starting to look old. From all that drinking. Mind your own business. <laughs> okay. Now. Can I... How do I get in here? Can I use the chisel on it? I can't jimmy the door lock with that. Business card? There we go. I guess I'm better at this pirating thing than I thought. It worked. Now I gotta do that. There. I poked holes in it. I'm sure there's nothing in there except one of those hotel Bibles. It's so musty that I don't want to open it up. There we go. Use the nails. I'm not sure if that's strong enough to hold it. I might need... There. The bed has been nailed down. That ought to do it. All right. Got the book here. The Good Soups, A Life in Pictures by M.M. M. Good Soup. There we go. Uh... I don't believe we've met. Who are you? I am Griswold, last of the good soups and proprietor of this hotel. You may have heard of us and our soup restaurant resort empire that stretches across the Caribbean. Well... Oh, this was once our proudest resort, ah, but it lost all its popularity after the regular eruptions of Mount Acidophilus stopped. The volcano has erupted! Yes, I know! The good soup empire is saved! Well, I'm happy for you. Soon the resort will be flooded with tourists coming to see the volcano, and I can finally put on the show I was working on the last time we had guests. What show is that? Voulez-vous Vichyssois? <laughs> a dramatic musical about a talented young Parisian soup chef who is cruelly taken down by the Paris culinary establishment for her revolutionary ideas about soup preparation. I'm sure it'll be a big hit. <laughs> I thought if I died, I'd be buried with your aunt. Well, isn't it obvious? You can't be buried in the Good Soup family crypt unless you're a member of the Good Soup family. Member of the family, huh? Uncle Griswold, it's me! Don't you recognize me? 
recognize you? I've never seen you before in my life. What is your name? <laughs> uh... Split pea with ham. Split pea with ham? Actually, my name is P. Hamilton Goodsoup. Split's just a nickname. Hmm. <laughs> I don't recall having any relatives with that name. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? No, you don't look much like a good soup at all. In fact, you look more like one of the Broth's child. We always did have weak features. Broth's Are you child? Sure? Of course I'm sure. <laughs> Every day I wander the Good Soup family hall of portraits and give my respects to each of my distinguished ancestors. Every distinguishing feature of the Good Soup family is there in those pictures. And I see nothing in any of those portraits that might remind me of you. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Okay, I need to convince him that I look like a good soup. So how do I... I can't use the mirror with that. I can see the hallway. Huh, I know there's something. Something about that I gotta... Hmm. It's full of all the dates and fun facts you'd ever want to know about the Good Soup family. And it says I'll receive a new book every month, or cancel with no obligation, and keep my copy of Buccaneers and Bouillabaisse Bays as a free gift. <laughs> Let me see here. Use that on him. My pirate instincts tell me I should keep this to myself. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? No, I still don't think you have those noble good soup features. If you looked at all like a good soup, I might believe your story. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. All right, well. Let me look around. I might come across what I need while I'm doing other stuff. locked. I can't use the chisel with that. Gotta get up to that barrel. I can't reach it. It's locked. It's locked. Nah. Okay. Where can I get the key? I'm sure it's just a bunch of legal stuff I couldn't hope to understand. It's labeled Good Soup Family Records. I'm sure it's just a bunch of legal... Oh, right, that's where I'll get the uh, death certificate later. What do I need? The whole portrait is too big to hang there. Oh, I know, I know, I get it.
There we go. Ah, oh, there's nothing like family. No matter what may happen in the topsy-turvy world of the Caribbean resort business, I can always relax in the knowledge that I come from good, wealthy stock. Breeding. That's what's important. Breeding and culture. Just like Grandfather Lambert. Breeding, culture, and lots and lots of really old money. It makes a man proud. It's funny. I don't remember Grandfather Lambert as looking so... so common. Oh, weird. It's like his eyes follow me. Pictures like that really creep me out. Hmm. They got Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. Grandfather Lambert. Are these are these Highlander references, I wonder? Possibly. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? Now that you mention it, you do bear a slight resemblance to my great grandfather, C. Lambert Good Soup. Clammy? C. My Lambert. Folks used to tell me all the okay. time. You're the spitting image of old chowder good soup. You know, I think you're right. Uh, I wonder why I didn't see it before. I could just talk about good soup history all day. How about that first fateful journey made to the Caribbean? Oh, you mean the one that... Baron Salmon Bisque the Good Soup began in 1621? <laughs> exactly. He landed on Scab Island with just a spoon and a dream. In just four short years, he had formed the largest chain of all soup restaurants in the Western Hemisphere. By 1635, he had driven the entire Van Salad family out of the Caribbean and had a restaurant empire that spanned the globe. Actually, the Van Salads were not driven out until 1637, and the Good Soup chain of restaurants and resorts never did become popular in the South Pacific. Yes, we are. All right. Whatever. Well, son, it looks like you were right. Welcome back to the glorious name of Good Soup. I'm, uh, honored. And as a Good Soup, you're welcome to every benefit the name provides. Instant prestige around Blood Island. A 10% discount at any of the Good Soup resorts in the Caribbean. And, of course, medical, dental, and a 401k. And the best thing of all, if you should happen to drop dead, you will be buried in the extravagant Good Soup family crypt. It's as if all my dreams have come true. <laughs> all right. Now to die. I'd like a drink, please. Sure, sure. Okay, where's the... there. See, I told you guys I had this all memorized. Oh dear, he's had a sudden and completely unexpected relapse of death. Oh, and just as we were getting reacquainted, as his kinsman, it is my duty to give him a proper burial. It is my solemn vow, the youthful P. Hamilton Goodsoup shall be buried in the Goodsoup family crypt. All right. All right. Check it out. This is awesome. If you go through there. Hey, there's a hole in the ceiling of this crypt. I think I might be able to squeeze through. Look at that! Wow, it's a tunnel that opens on a deep, dark forest. It looks familiar somehow. As if I've seen it in a dream. Or maybe it's 
Well, I don't know. Great jumping monkeys! A terrifying horde of stunningly rendered rabbit jaguars! They're <laughs> coming right at me! Whew! It's a good thing I couldn't get through that hole. I'd be done for. Oh, that that's just a great reference to the first game right there. Yikes. Oh man, I was so hyped as a kid when we got Grim Fandango and it came with Monkey Island Madness and we finally got to play the original two Monkey Island games. That was great. Back back in the day, you'd buy a game and they would just give you their old games for free. You don't see that so much anymore. Um. Oh, hello there. How do I get out of this crypt? There's <laughs> no way out of this crypt for either of us. I must haunt this lonely tomb until I've married a man I truly love. And you can't leave because the door's locked. Hey, nice ring. <laughs> Was it something I said? I hate this ring. It's been passed down from mother to daughter in the Good Soup family for generations. It was to be my wedding ring until that evil pirate stole the diamond and left me. Left me here to die of a broken heart. Go into the light. If only it were that easy. I'm afraid I can never leave this crypt until I marry. Are you attached? <laughs> Oh, this is great. The lady got the angels holding crocks of soup, the wreath full of vegetables. Engaged, actually. <laughs> what a shame. You sure have pretty eyes. Oh. <laughs> this is just a shade too creepy for me. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, I know that Die. laugh. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm not going to do that again. I think I broke my skull. I'm all skull. It's your own fault. Stop scaring me like that. So I did scare you? Really? Well, startled is more like it. Oh. B but startled in a terrified kind of way. You really are very, very scary. Don't talk down to me. I really don't have any choice. <laughs> I saw you get out of that crypt. Does this mean that you're dead? No, I was only faking. Darn. I thought together we could walk among the living and spawn a new wave of terror throughout the Caribbean. So what you're saying is that you only love me for my legs. Something like that. <laughs> hey. I can't reach. Oh. <laughs> Look at that little animation of Murray. That's great. All right. Well, that can reach the lantern, but it won't grab hold. Hmm. There we go. I've got it. Hey, what happened to the light? Murray, be fearsome. Okay. I am one of the living dead. Fear me. Release me. Hey, look at me. I'm a ghost here. <laughs> That's just pathetic. Hmm.
The crowbar won't work on solid stone. Murray, do your stuff. Okay. Move! There we go. Mortal fool! Release me from this wretched tomb! I must be set free, or I will haunt you forever! I will hide your keys beneath the cushions of your upholstered furniture! And never more will you be able to find socks that match! All right, hang on. I'm coming. Great work, Murray. I... I was terrifying, wasn't I? My demonic powers have made me omnipotent! <laughs> oh, I just noticed uh -oh. on the books Looks in like there they had a, out of oil. had a Zombies Ate My Neighbors oh, reference. Shuffle off and give me peace. Zombies Ate My Neighbors, another it's great... It's useless now that it's out of oil. Classic LucasArts game. I hope that one gets a remake. I'm wondering who... Who controls the rights to that? Would it be LucasArts or Konami? Because they both were involved in that. It's a memorial plaque for Mini Stroni Good Soup. Either way, I hope, uh, you know, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. That's such a great game. That really should get, like, re released on uh, modern hardware. Well, Murray, are you ready to continue our heady adventuring? Murray? Where'd he go? Hey, what an amazing story I have to tell. I was dead, but I live again. Who wants to hear about it? <laughs> eh, you guys don't deserve to hear a good story. All right, got my death certificate. Stand. Oh, wait a minute. While I'm here. De Gula. Minnie, it's been so long. Oh, Charles, it has. It has. You look so different. Really? Why, you look exactly the same. Oh, Charles, how you flatter me. Oh, but you must go now. But why? Now that I've found you again after all these years. What would our families say if they knew we were alone together on such a romantic night? Minnie, this may sound rash, but I... I love you, Minnie Good Soup. Oh, Charles, you mustn't. Oh, I can't help it. I've always loved you. Do you hear? I've always loved you, Minnie, and I always will. Come away with me now. Hello? Oh, but Charles, it just isn't done. Think of the scandal it would cause. To heck with the scandal, Minnie. Oh. Marry me. Oh, yes, Charles. Yes. A thousand times. Yes. Then kiss me, my love. Tim Burton's Corpse Bride totally ripped off this game. Somewhere beneath Monkey Island. 
Have you found her, you cadaverous canine? Yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. She's not on Plunder Island, Captain LeChuck. <laughs> then scour the seas, you ossified rats! Hunt them down, then bring them to me. Find me, Guy Rush Drinkwood. It's with him that you'll find Elaine. Burn down every island in the Caribbean if you have to. But bring me my bride! And more slaw! Curse those villains! They never give you enough slaw with these bagu meals. Mm -mm -mm. So there we see the introduction of Dingy Dog, one of the best characters in this whole franchise, but he was only ever in this one game, unfortunately. Welcome back to Mutual of Stab. Alright, let's get a whole lot of money. I'm cashing in this insurance policy. Give me a lot of money. But this is a life insurance policy. You collect when the policyholder dies. No, honest. I was dead for a really long time. And you just got better? Well, yes. Do you have any proof of this miracle? As a matter of fact, smart guy, I've got your proof right here. A death certificate. Well, this must be some kind of mistake. Uh-uh, it's right there in high-res black and white. I die. <laughs> Give me a lot of money. Hmm. It looks like I'm left with no choice but to acquiesce. No, just give me my money. That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. Now, can I use the crowbar on this door here? I can't use the crowbar with that. No. Hmm. How do I get up there then? Oh, wait a minute. I remember. See, I told you guys, I got this game, I know this game backwards and forwards. You know, it's been a little while, but I remember. It's full of sugar water now. Okay. Now, clearing. It's full of yummy, delicious sugar water. Bet that water sure tastes good. Okay. They're trapped inside and glowing like mad. All right. I can't use the jar with that. Perfect. House is working now. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Flying Welshman eating a sandwich there. Who are you? Welshman. Ooh. I am the ferryman between here and Skull Island. Trapped for so very long in the icy ocean mists. Oh, how I hate that blasted mist. Really? I like mist. I think it's pretty. Well, sure, mist is pretty. 
buddy. Gad, is it dull? I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. I will never again dare that wretched fog without a compass. Once too often did I tempt fate. And just look what it did to my clothes. Just <laughs> look at me. I'm soaked. Well, you know, I just happen to have a compass right here. Then, poor mortal, I will show you the way. Rough seas and untold dangers await you on the mysterious Skull Island. I'm not afraid. You will be. <laughs> you will be. <laughs> oh, Star Wars references. Those were the days back before Star Wars was ruined forever. <laughs> this was before the prequels, even. Even the bravest of men must dread the horror of this place. Steal your courage, boy, now, before you gaze upon the terrible, this part's horrible great. face of Skull Island. <laughs> That's a duck. What are you talking about? Don't you see the skull? This island doesn't look like a skull at all. It looks like a great, big, enormous duck. It should be called Duck Island. Well, you see, you, you gotta squint and sort of turn your head and... Ooh, it's just so scary. If you squint and turn your head, it looks like a bunny. Well, anyway, see that light up there on the cliff face? That's Smuggler's Cave. It's run by King Andre, the greatest smuggler in the world. And his nefarious assistant, Cruff. But how do I get up there? You'll have to go to the top of the cliff. Won't you be coming with me? No, you must go alone. There will be someone there who will help you. But I warn you, beware of King Andre. He is as ruthless as he is bald. Good <laughs> luck. Thanks. All right. This guy. Hello. Can you tell me how to find the evil smugglers of Skull Island? Beats me. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> uh... I, I think I remember something about that at the orientation seminar. Let me think. The cave is halfway down this sheer cliff face. Climb on board this dumbwaiter. I'll, I'll lower you down. It looks pretty rickety. Are you sure it's safe? No. I've never <laughs> used it before, but uh, I'm sure it can't be that dangerous. I'm a temp here. The, the usual elevator operator, uh, Braunbeard, uh, he's sick, so I'm filling in. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. What's your name? It's Lafoot. Lafoot. Would you lower me down to the smuggler's cave? Sure, sure, I can do that. You, you must weigh no more than, say, 20 pounds, right? Actually, more like 120. Oh, well, it can't hurt to try, right? No, you're sure about this. Oh, yeah. You don't look that heavy at all. Hmm. Is that not tied securely? Here we go. Okay, give me a little bit more slack. Whoops! Okay, that's too much slack. Ah! Oh boy. <laughs> Gotta love that falling music. I think that's the same music from uh, part two when you're going under the water, right? Still say it looks like a duck. All right. Yes. Let's try that lowering me down the cliff thing again. All right. I, I think I'm getting better at this. Please be careful this time. No problem. Here we go. I got it. I got it. I don't got it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Mary Poppins and
I have got so much money, it's almost embarrassing. Well, hello. Let's talk, Mr. Uh... Tito. Just Tito. Very well, Mr. <laughs> Threepwood. Hey, how did you know my... It is my business to know who enters and leaves Skull Island. I am King Andre, and this is my associate, Gruff. Were you looking for something in particular? The Good Soup Family Diamond. LeChuck stole it, you bought it, I want it. Now. <sighs> Please, sir? But we have so much quality merchandise here at the Pirates Club. Our prices get lower every day. Everything a pirate or pirate in trading could possibly want is here for the right price. <laughs> Could you not laugh like that anymore? The Good Soup Diamond is the centerpiece of my collection. The fantastic energy flowing through it is the key to all my power. So, can I have it? Of course you can't have it. Unless you were to give me something in return. That diamond belongs in a museum. So do post-impressionist paintings, Mr. Threepwood. So do post-impressionist paintings. <laughs> what the heck is that supposed to mean? One day, you will understand. <laughs> You're a madman. Am I mad? Am I? <laughs> is it madness to sit in a cave at the top of a deserted island? Accumulating vast amounts of gold and jewels and stuffed animals, stockpiling plunder from across the Caribbean and passing the savings on to you? Is that madness or genius? Good point. I take it back. I'm not crazy. My prices are. Maybe we could make a deal. As you wish. You are a formidable opponent, Mr. Threepwood. But it looks as if our game of cat and mouse must cease. <laughs> It is a perfect diamond, one of the largest I've ever seen. I'll take it. And so it comes with a very large price. Eh, enough with the hard sell. How much? It will cost you an awful lot of money. Do you have that much? Well, I have a lot of money. <laughs> Not enough. My partner is right. <laughs> we can't give it to you for anything less than an awful lot of money. But perhaps we can make a deal. My partner and I are very fond of cards, uh, poker in particular. How about a little wager? If you can defeat us at poker, you win the diamond. Sounds fair. Yes, fair. <laughs> Could you stop laughing like that? It's very unnerving. <laughs> so, Mr. Threepwood, the question is to you. Care to join us in a game of cards? No way, oh, I'm terrible shoot. at poker. I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, I'll play you for the diamond. You will have to pay to enter the game. Well, how much do I need? Not very much. Sure, I can handle that. This is a lot of money. I better only give them part of it. Have you ever played poker before, Mr. Threepwood? No. Would you believe this is my very first time? <laughs> then I'll give you a brief explanation. The game is the simplest variety of five-card style. I deal five cards to each of us. We show our cards to each other, and the player with the best hand wins. Well, how do I know what makes the best hand? If you have any questions, just ask us. You do trust us, don't you? Of course I trust you. <laughs> Very well. Let us begin. Hey, dealer, 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 dealer. Swing, dealer. Take a moment to look at your cards. Five of a kind, right there. Not even you guys can beat five of a kind. You're correct, Mr. Threepwood. We cannot beat five of a kind. The question remains, however, whether or not you can beat a pair. A pair? A pair of murderous smugglers. Huh? Us, Mr. Threepwood. I am talking about us. We're gonna kill you. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Whether or not you can beat a pair, that's pretty clever. <laughs> now, now, gentlemen, let's not be too hasty. 
There's a delivery man out here with a package. You idiots! You blew out the lights! I got the diamond. Not for long, you little... Coach! It's him, not me, you cretin! Who are you calling a fool? There he goes! Get him! Got what I needed from the smugglers. Good. Let us leave this place of evil. There's just one thing I need to do first. Really? What's that? Who's there? Oh, <laughs> just you. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Help! Help! Ah! Oh, wow. Guybrush just murdered that guy. <laughs> Good luck on the rest of your adventures, Guybrush. That got really dark. What? You can't mean... I'm afraid so. This work is too dangerous for me. I'm going to find a more stable, secure line of work. I hear there's still an opening for a chef on Scab Island. Well, you'll be sorely missed. I know, but my destiny lies out there, somewhere. Beyond the rolling waves. Farewell, good friend Welshman. Oh, wait. Where'd you say Scab Island was again? <laughs> East by Northeast. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks a bunch. Ah, whoops. I forgot to tell him that a magnetized pin will only have compass like properties for a short time. Oh, no. All right. It's a massive diamond engagement ring. All right, here we go. Eh. Hey. Elaine, are you all right? Guybrush? When? Where are we? You're okay. We're on Blood Island. LeChuck's ring had a terrible curse on it, but I put everything right. You're safe and everything's gonna be fine. Just fine. <laughs> Kiss of the Spider Monkey. That be well spoken, pet. But save your breath, lass. You'll be needing it for when you scream. I do. Where, where are we? Don't you be remembering this place, Freewood. It was not long ago when I trapped you here to suffer tortures most foul. Wait, I can remember. I've seen this place before in some terrible nightmare. It was no mere nightmare, Guybrush. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. <laughs> oh no, it can't be. But it is. This is the Carnival of the Damned. I, the Carnival of the Damned. You fiend, why have you brought us here? There be two reasons, you pathetic privateer. I be intended to torture and kill ye. And I'll be given Elaine a treasure. Ah, uh, you're wasting your time, LeChuck. Elaine's love can't be bought. Ah, but this be a very special treasure. This be the fabled treasure of Big Whoop. Big Whoop? Aye, the very pirate treasure you were searching for before I caught up with ye. What's so special about the treasure of Big Whoop? Isn't it just like any other pirate treasure? I see. 
Ye do not yet know the dreadful power that be Big Whoop. I guess not. Quake in fear, Threepwood, when I tell thee that Big Whoop be a damned portal to a demon netherworld. Okay. The treasures of Big Whoop be the very gates of hell themselves. Yay. Yeah. But how will Big Whoop make Elaine love you? Elaine shall pass through the hoary gates of Big Whoop, just as I once did, down to the inky blackness of the infernal nether regions. For you see, Big Whoop gives those who pass through it the greatest gift of all, immortality. But at what cost? Cost? <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> people may find me a bit unapproachable now, and the smell does take a while to get used to. But it'd be worth everything now that I have the power to make Elaine love me. But if you kill Elaine, won't she hate you even more? Aye, at first. But soon she'll be understanding what a grand gift eternal life be. And besides, the dating pool be surprisingly small when you're the living dead. <laughs> She'll just have to give me another chance. This whole amusement park, why? The Big Whoop Carnival was my most brilliant idea. Once I had the power of Big Whoop at my command, I could make Elaine mine at last. I see. But again, why an amusement park? I'll be getting to that. I knew Elaine would need a little coaxing, and that I'd be needing an army. A horrible army of the undead. Okay, but why an amusement park? <laughs> Are you going to let me finish? I'm not talking just to hear myself talk, you know. You're right. I've been rude. Please, go on. Everyone knows that the life of a seaman is a long, hard, lonely one. Sailors spend months longing for just a few days' leave. You know what they're looking for as soon as they get into porty. Uh... A family-oriented fun park! <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> of course. They come to take a ride on the giant roller coaster, the Great Monkey Mountain. They reach the top of the highest peak, and then hands in the air, screaming like monkeys. They plunge down the slope into a great stream of lava. That doesn't sound the least bit fun. Aye, it's not. In fact, it's downright unpleasant. But when they reach the other side, they're fitting warriors for my skeletal army of the dam. How did you find Big Whoop? That be a long story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Does the torture start after we're done talking here? Aye. Go on, then. Back when I were alive, Elaine despised me. No. No, 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 it's true. I can see that now. She didn't like me at all. But I were determined to prove me worth to her, you see. So, I set sail to find the legendary secret of Monkey Island. Been there, done that. Well, I did it first, you nefarious nudibranch. <laughs> a few days after setting sail, me ship was caught in a terrible typhoon and was torn apart. I would have drowned, but some friendly sharks found me and set me ashore on Blood Island. There I was, marooned, with no hope of winning Elaine's heart. I thought me luck had run out, but one day a ship made port at Blood Island. Twas the ship of one Captain Marley, Elaine's own grandfather. I struck up a conversation with Rum Rogers Sr., first mate on the ship. And for the price of a few drinks, I learned that they had the map to the legendary treasure of Big Whoop. Although I had no ship and no money. Hold on. Can I sit down? Both my legs are going to sleep. Although I had no <laughs> ship and no money, I planned to beat Marley's crew to the treasure and take it for myself. I didn't have the money to buy a new ship, but I still had my greatest asset. 
<laughs> Your immunity to soap? But I still had my greatest asset. That uh, indefinable Chuck charm. One of the rich young debutantes on Blood Island was helpless against it. After a week with me, she would have followed me to the grave. Unfortunately for her, she didn't get the chance. I pried the diamond from her family's engagement ring and sold it to some cutthroat smugglers for the cost of a new ship. <laughs> you big old bedwetting duty head. Hm, I've been called worse. With my new ship, I easily overtook Marley's crew and beat them to Big Whoop, which just so happened to be here on Monkey Island. I'm still confused about the carnival. Then ask me! As designer and founder, I can answer all your questions. How did you build an amusement park on a deserted island? The process begins with a winning design team. I scoured the Caribbean, looking for the best and brightest artists, engineers, and creative people. After a lengthy period of intensive recruitment, intimidation, <laughs> and murder, <laughs> I had my team at work, slashing and burning acres of old-growth timberland on Monkey and Dinky Islands. That must have been back-breaking work. Aye, that it was. Fortunately, hundreds of men were lost to malaria, wild animals, or construction accidents. <laughs> What kind of attractions do you have? Here at Big Whoop, we pride ourselves on the variety and authenticity of our attractions. We be using a magical blend of art, technology, and indentured servitude that we like to call Dynamo Monk Electrics. <laughs> Frighteningly realistic skins and other body parts are attached to a framework of gears, servos, and pulleys. All constructed from a remarkably lightweight composite material. Fascinating. Dynamo Monk Electrics. I thought the treasure of Big Whoop was on Dinky Island. <laughs> Dinky Island be an atoll just off the coast of Monkey Island. But they be connected by a maze of mysterious tunnels that run under the very ocean floor. So although you dug for treasure on Dinky, when you found me carnival, you were on Monkey Island. <laughs> Very tidy explanation. Aye. <laughs> Who told you this was a good idea? You're insane. Maybe, Threefoot. Maybe. But I did it all for love. I'm mad for you, Elaine. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. What is the secret of Monkey Island? The secret of Monkey Island? I could tell you, but I'd rather make you guess. <laughs> and that Rosebud is a sled? That's not it. Everyone knows that. No, it goes much deeper than that. It's an ancient secret, closely guarded uh, by the natives and uh, pirates who happen to... You don't even know the secret of Monkey Island, do you? No, not really. All right, then. The only person who knows the secret of Monkey Island is Ron Gilbert. And he's not telling for now. I really hope he gets to come back and do an actual, like, his version of Monkey Island 3. I've heard enough of your evil stories. Let's get this over with. But there'll be so many more horrible things I'd be wanting to tell you. I'm not listening to you anymore. See, I'm ignoring you. Ah, you'd better listen! La 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 la, I can't hear you. La 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 la. Very well, Freepwood. If you're going to act like a child, I'll help you get in the mood. I think you deserve a timeout, young man. Yikes!
It's not locked. Your plan was flawless, LeChuck, except for one minor detail. That will be your downfall. <laughs> He's taking Elaine on his roller coaster of death. I've got to reach her before she becomes his undead bride. What's happened to me? Head foggy. Can't think. I'm swimming. Must concentrate and rescue Elaine. I've got to save Elaine. But how can I save Elaine when I'm just a little boy? If only I could think straight. Must clear my mind. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Wolf Carnival, little guy. Come on over here and meet your old pal, Dingy Dog. Oh, for crying out loud. All right, so we're almost done here. This is, we're just about at the end of the game. Hey, you can't just have that, kid. How can I win one of these fabulous prizes? Well, that's easy, <laughs> matey. If I can't guess your weight or your age, you get to pick what you want. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch. It's just that easy. I'll bet you can't guess how old I am. <laughs> bet you I can. A little fearsome buccaneer like yourself must be seven years old. Ha! Wrong. I just so happen to be 20. <laughs> well, do you have any proof for your old pal Dingy Dog? You calling me a liar? <laughs> you bet I am. <laughs> I have my proof right here. Scum Actors Guild membership card. Guybrush Threepwood, age 20? I suppose you're right. <laughs> Pick your prize. All right. Give me that anchor. I'll take it away, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your stay here at Big Wolf. Look into your heart. I'm the prize you really want. What? <laughs> you picked the anchor? Well, it's a really nice anchor, Murray. Sorry. Let's talk to Murray. I can't believe you. Murray? I'm not speaking to you. How could you pick that <laughs> anchor over your best friend? All right. What good is a dumb hunk of iron? Hey, what do you think you're doing? I just want one of those pies. Yeah? Well, I just want out of this stinking rat head. Life's tough, kid. Cope. It's not even a real anchor. Oh, wait. Hang on. I'm a real talking skull. <laughs> now that's not very nice, little boy. <laughs> Come on, now stop hitting your pal Dingy Dog. I'm not gonna warn you again, kid. After all we've been through together. <laughs> you better cut that out. Yeah, you're really starting to bug me, kid. Fine. Take this. All right. <laughs> that does it. You're going down, little punk. <laughs> Ow, he bit me. Hey, give me back that hair, kid. You're ruining the suit. All right, got some hair of the dog that bit me. You would have made a lousy undead monster anyway. Let's see. I'm going to wait for an owner who understands <laughs> my need to bring fear and pestilence. What kind of snow cones do you have? <laughs> what kind of cones did you ask? Why, I have every kind imaginable. I have the most distinct type of snow cones in the world. In fact, my cones are so original, so inventive, and so <laughs> unique that most are completely inedible. Let me list some for you. I have sweet cones, meat cones, cold cones, mold cones, bold cones with lime, cones with slime, <laughs> veggie cones, wedgie cones, hedgy cones. I used some of my neighbor's edge in that one. Cones with spice, cones with lice, berry cones, carry cones, dairy cones. And the Christmas, oh, 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 Mary gone. <laughs> so, what do you think of that? 
Like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <laughs> Bye now. All right, get some pepper. I'm going to wait for an owner who understands. Oops, my snow cone melted. Oh, darn. Get out of here! Oh, whatever. Before I call up okay. the demonic legions of Hades and set them upon you like a swarm of angry locusts. Talk to this guy. You. Yeah, kid, what is it? Yikes, what is that horrible smell? It's a giant rat suit, you little brat! What did you expect, roses? Am I the only one nauseated by that terrible stench? Okay, okay, the suit smells, we've heard it! Everybody just come over and pick on the giant rat man! What are you guys doing here? It's blow the man down, the most fun in the midway. Hit the funny clown and win a fantastic prize. Watch the pies fly from the cannon with blinding speed and loud report. And if your aim is true, go home with your winnings. Join in the laughs with your happy sailor host Warfrat and his pal Monty Meringue. What flavor? What? What flavor are the pies today? I don't know, lemon meringue I think. What kind of a stupid question is that? I want to shoot the cannon. I want to shoot the cannon. Sorry, little boy. You're too young. Blow the man down is for older kids. That's discrimination. How <laughs> do I know it really works if I can't see it go off? Okay, kid. You want to see the cannon fire? Here we go. What in the world is meringue? I don't know, kid. Whipped egg whites, I guess. What's Dingy Dog really like in person? What are you asking me for? I'm just a giant rat. I'm not allowed to associate with His Highness, the great and mighty Dingy Dog. <laughs> All right. Never mind. I gotta get the anchor into that pie. If you value your life, mere mortal, you hands off. I don't want to weigh that down. <laughs> Get lost, kid. How do I? Amscray! Oh, I know. Now it's a heavy pie pan. Now I've got a heavy pie pan full of shaving cream. There we go. What are you doing over there? I found this pie, mister. Huh? Oh, yeah, thanks, kid. Shoot it, shoot it. Not right now. Oh, but I want to see the cannon fire. Be cheeks, half pint. Look, man, I pay your salary. <laughs> tell me to tell the Chuck you've got unhappy kids running around here. Okay, okay, you little. <laughs> Did you just hear something? No. Weird. Maybe it's the acoustics of that smelly giant head. Shut up, kid. <laughs> Okay, so I knocked him out. Aha! Now I go back here. Did he just get dragged off by the monkeys? That's creepy. Yoo-hoo! Stinky Mr. Rat! Hey! Get out of there, you little punk! What are you gonna do about it, vermin boy? This'll teach you! All right. I'd rather keep these pie bits for a better time. Okay, I reckon we got what we need now. <clears throat> I'll take that old snow cone for you. <laughs> I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <laughs> Bye now. Okay. That meringue looks tasty. Mmm. Hairy. All right. 
Ooh. Ugh. The pepper helps, though. Uh, ah, brain freeze. Guybrush kicks butt once again. All right, we're at the last part here. This part is pretty short. Too late for me to get out. And pretty easy. Too late for me to get out. Too late for me to get out. By itself, this rope would make a lousy fuse. Monk Electric Wally. He gad, he looks so lifelike. Hey, wait a minute. He really is Wally. Ouch! That's really by itself, this rope would make a lousy fuse. Okay. There, it's soaked in oil and probably highly. Cool. If I can't help but love the little woman. Eat, claim, and death, great word. to beat the game here. Missed the thing. Wow. Shoot. All right, back around. Mm. <laughs> 
poor Wally. Okay. Now we're actually gonna do it this time. Here we go. And that's it. We did it. We've beaten the game. Nothing left to do but watch the ending. Forget your arch nemesis Murray. Mark my words, I shall return to haunt you. Do you hear me? I shall return. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. That's this is so unfair. The curse of Monkey Island. Hope you guys enjoyed this let's play. If you did, uh, post a comment, click the like button. Click the subscribe button, like, comment, subscribe, uh, donate to the Patreon, follow our social medias down in the uh, links down in the description, description, <laughs> the description below, and uh, yeah, we'll be back with more Let's Plays and, and all kinds of videos. We got all kinds of content coming. <laughs> Whoa, excuse me. Quentin Flynn was Mr. Fossey? Well, I'll be. That's, uh... That's Raiden. From Metal Gear Solid 2. Right? Yeah. How about that? I never knew. You see, we, we learn... We learn something new every... Every video here at the Neat Dreams channel, we learn... Something new. This is a learning channel. Post a comment. Tell me what you learned today. Or if you've got something... Maybe you could teach me something. Post a comment. Let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Donate to the Patreon. We take Bitcoin, too. You'll see in our links below. And... And we're gonna get some t-shirts made. We'll make neat dreams t-shirts you can buy. And stickers and merch and that's all coming that's all coming down the line we're growing our channel here growing and always expanding always seeking out new revenue streams here the neat dreams channel man i love this game that was good I'm so happy i uh woke up today and saw this on the steam store This was just what I needed. Nice, nice little trip down memory lane there. And a nice new two-part video let's play for the channel. That's two more videos in the bank. Yep. I'll just keep talking here over the credits. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to play some more LucasArts adventure games. I love these games. I'll have to play the first two. We'll have to do a let's play of uh, Thimbleweed Park, Maniac Mansion, uh, all those games. 
I gotta play Outlaws. That's that's a LucasArts, not an adventure game, but a first-person shooter. It's got similar animated cutscenes to this, though. Really great animation. Yeah, I think Outlaws was the same year as this, even. LucasArts, really, as far as like PC games go, that really defined my whole childhood with PC gaming. You know, I had a few other games like, uh, I played like Carmageddon and uh, Redneck Rampage and stuff like that, but the LucasArts games, especially the LucasArts adventure games, like that was, I had more of those than any, any other publisher. Probably the second most was uh, Maxis. Maxis made some great games. The Sim games, always great. Sim City, Sim Copter, Sim Ant. Special thanks to George Lucas. Ah, George Lucas. His whole legacy is being destroyed by the Disney this Corporation. This carnival is great, Dad. It sure is, son. But you know, rumor has it that the man who built this place is buried here. And they say that to this day, his frozen body remains in the tunnels somewhere beneath the amusement park. 